Welcome to the show that sorts out the nuts and bolts of the car industry first on Driven. Well, it's certainly raining here, but the real storm clouds are gathering over Longbridge. The Rover 75 is probably the most important car Driven has ever tested. The livelihoods of thousands of people in the British car industry depend on it being the natural choice for hundreds of thousands of drivers everywhere. It's also the first new mainstream Rover developed by BMW since they took over the company four years ago. And it has to crack the ultra-competitive fleet market. Yes, and that's a market of Vauxhall know inside and out, but even they, the fleet kings, have managed to get it wrong in the past when they introduced the Vectra some years ago. But now they've given us the new improved model. They tell us it's got 2,000 improvements designed to make the car much sharper on the road. You want a car that's sharp? The Mondeo has always been a fleet hack that comes over all sports saloon when you get it on a decent road. And the ST24 is the sharpest of the lot. But is it good enough to fend off a fresh approach from Rover and a thoroughly transformed Vauxhall? So we have all three cars gathered together. We're here in a corporate car park. We're also going to test them on the open road and at our test track. So back to a very wet group test where we're pitting those fleet car champions, the Vauxhall Vectra and the Ford Mondeo ST24 against the brand new Rover 75. Fairground England, this car has recently been described as. Frankly, there is nothing as frivolous as a fairground going on in here. It's all very refined, discreet, well-mannered even. It's almost as if you were to raise your voice and shout. You hear a little voice in the back seat telling you to please pipe down. Could you be quiet, old chap? OK, so it's probably too retro for some people. I mean, look at these dials. They're like 1920s antique watches. But the important thing is there's evidence of real imagination in here. And that overall impression of hushed gentility continues on the road. The 75 really is silky smooth. While you might be in a hurry, this is one car that simply doesn't want to be rushed. Here comes the rain again, falling and rushed is how I've described the exec who wants to buy the Vauxhall Vectra. Always in a hurry, always late for his meetings, but with two and a half litres of V6 under his bonnet, he could get there yesterday. So what about these 2,000 improvements they reckon they've introduced? How many of them can you actually feel on the road? Well, quite a few, actually. The steering, that's vastly improved. And as for the suspension, it now rides over the big bumps, but it still manages to remain taut when you put it under pressure. On the inside, it's like all Vauxhalls. It's got those big, fat, giant, clunky knobs and switches you feel you could operate with a pair of boxing gloves on. Fighting torque, eh? Well, let me tell you, the Mondeo's been winning round after round in the corporate car park for years, and it's not about to give up the fight now, because this is the ultimate Mondeo, the ST24. It's got a fantastic 170 brake horsepower, two and a half litre V6 engine. It's been lowered, suspension's been stiffened. It's got a body kit that sucks it to the ground. Does this really look like a shrinking violet to you? That's enough from us. We're off to the Intel Corporation in Swindon, home to hordes of company buyers to see what they make of our three cars. Ah yes, the fleet car user chooser, the most discerning customer of the lot. Well, we've got 50 of them gathered here. We've got our three cars. They're going to have a good old wander around them, poke, rummage around and tell us exactly what they make of them. In you come. Right, over here, open the doors up, have a look inside, see what you think. All three cars are generating a lot of interest from these company car buyers. First up for group inspection is the Ford Mondeo. What do you think? It is very comfortable, it's very sporty, it looks the most yeah. sporty of the lot. That's the young person's car. It yeah. looks plasticky. <laughs> so, mixed views on the Ford Mondeo, but it's crunch time now for the Rover 75. I like this old aesthetic look. I'm not a Rover fan originally, but this one does look quite nice actually. It's a bit retro, it just depends how much, how long retro lasts in the scheme of things. So, uh, I think it's, it's got flares on. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, there is a Vauxhall over it I play with as well. <laughs> Maybe in about 10 years, <laughs> when I'm a bit uh, middle-aged. <laughs> Who wants a Vauxhall when you can have a Rover? Much more classic. So they've all had a bit of time in each of the cars, but guys and dolls, will you go and stand by the car of your choosing? Who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? 
That's I think the Vectra, the Vectra is going to win this easily. Where are they all, all gone? Where's all the people around the Vectra? <laughs> They've gone for the Mondeo. So it looks like they've all gone for the Mondeo, but just one more question. Hands up, who'd rather have a BMW? <laughs> <laughs> Back to this week's group test. At last, the rain has stopped and we're at the test track to find out how the Rover 75 shapes up to the Vauxhall Vectra and the Ford Mondeo. There's some ground to be made up since in part one, most of our user choosers plumped for the Ford. So much for the corporate car park then, but what about all those performance related arguments you're gonna have by the photocopier? Well, we're gonna do a braking and an acceleration test, but first, Jason's gonna see how they handle. Come on, Mike, in you get. Do I have to, Jason? I've been in the car with you before. Well, Mike, Ford Mondeo ST24. It's currently the sportiest Mondeo you can buy. And we're going to go into these cones here at 30 mile an hour in third gear. Let's see how Oh, look at that. That is tremendous. Oh, my dinner's doing a bit of a sideways thing inside my stomach, but oh, very impressive. Well, I've got absolutely no problem with that at all. How composed was that? Next up, the Vauxhall Vectra. Up to the slalom. 30 mile an hour, in we go, third gear. Looking at the speed, still doing I'm 30. I'm having to work Whoa, a lot harder. Cold. Speed's now dropped off to about 25. Oh. It's gone back up to 30. Oh, we nearly Just clipped. missed that cone. Rover 75, Mike. Oh, you can see how hard I'm yeah, having to work here. you are here. really having to work. And look uh, at the speed. Well, oh. I'm, I'm wiping the speed off because, you know, when the body starts pitching and rolling like that. It's top heavy, Jason. Well, there you have it. The Ford Mondeo takes a lead in a handling test. The Vauxhall Vectra comes a poor second. And the Rover, well, it's such a gent of a car, it just doesn't like being flung about. It's quite simply one of the most important tests we can subject any car to. Penny will be driving along our simulated motorway at a steady 70 miles per hour when she comes across a stationary HGV and has to swerve safely out of the way. Earlier we wired up the cars with this telemetry equipment which measures the distance it takes each to come to a complete halt. Mike has bravely agreed to operate it from the front seat. Right Penny, the full Mondeo. Lots of grunt, lots of talk. Coming up to 50 mile an hour, 60 mile an hour, 70. Hold it right there and break. Oh, oh, oh. How was that? Give me five, girl. Yes. It was fantastic. A stopping distance of 281.6 feet. The Vauxhall Vectra, the finest from Luton. You're doing 70 mile an hour right now, so you want to hold it around that speed. Don't you dare hit those brakes until I say. Okay, okay. Break. Oh, very. Oh, that ABS. Oh. Yet again, lovely and controllable. It just went through yeah. beautifully. The Vauxhall Vectra stops in 270.6 feet, which is slightly better. Penny, the Rover 75. Yeah, here we are. The newest car, the newest brakes. Let's hope it stops the quickest. You're going a wee bit fast. And don't you dare touch those brakes I'll try, until I'll try I say and... now. <laughs> Absolutely perfect. 264 foot and we went in at 70 miles an hour. The Rover comes in at 264 feet, which means in this test, the Rover comes first, the Vauxhall Vectra comes second, with the Mondeo in third place. So, is the Rover 75 the saviour of the British car industry? Well, yes and no. It's the sort of car you either love or hate. It did reasonably well in all our track tests, but the biggest problem is that Rover has gambled on giving the 75 a very grown-up image. And if our corporate car park test is anything to go by, well, it's a gamble that may well not pay off. The Vauxhall on the other hand is now a pretty safe bet. This new Vectra really is greatly improved. It's a much more entertaining car to drive than the Rover, and it's the quickest of the three. It's also very well put together. What a shame, it just looks so dull. So the winner has to be the Mondeo. The ST24 scores highly for its looks, its handling, its stability, its precision on that high-speed lane change, its overall feel. If you're on a motorway mission but you still want to have fun when you take the long way home, this is the obvious.